What's up, Kyle Gang? Welcome back to some dynamics. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So what do we have here? Well, we have this weird kind of thing going on. So we have a beam from C to D, and then another one from B to C, and they both have the same angle, and that distance crossed by them is X. Then this is connected from B at A to a block that's moving back and forth. So it has a velocity of 10 meters a second. I drew these the wrong way. This arrow is going to the left, and this velocity of acceleration is going to the right. So this velocity is to the left, but that acceleration is going backwards to the right. So we want to find the angular acceleration and the angular velocity of that CD, right, this rod here, at theta is equal to 60 degrees. So let's go ahead and write that out. So how can we express this, right? Well, this theta is the same as this theta, so these are both going to have the same angular acceleration so, and the same angular velocity. So we want to express it in terms of things we know, which is velocity and position, or velocity and acceleration linearly and linear position. So let's write out an equation for x here. All right, what does this x look like? So this x is going to be equal to, right? What if we were to lay one of these down? It would be cosine of theta. So it would be L cosine of theta. We're going to take this length to be L. So we're going to say that x is equal to L cosine of theta. But this only bridges half the gap because it's only going to get us halfway there. So we need to put a 2 out front, 2L cosine of theta. And let's label this the distance from right, 2L cosine of theta. Let's label this the distance of BD. So what happens if we take the derivative of this? Well, we're going to get x dot. And what is x dot? Well, x dot is the rate of change of this length. And you'll notice that the rate of change of this length, right, however much b and d get closer or further apart, is going to be the same as the velocity of a, right? And we know the velocity of a, and we know the acceleration of a. So this is going to be really useful information to know. So we're taking the time derivative of this. So this is going to be 2L sine of theta. And of course, that's going to bring out a negative. And then we have to do a chain rule, and we have to do a catch a theta dot. Okay, so now how are we going to use this? Well, theta dot is what we're solving for. Theta dot is equal to angular velocity. So we want to solve for this. So let's, let's rearrange this equation. And if you do that, you're going to get theta dot equal to x dot over negative 2L sine of theta. All right, so then let's plug in what we know. So theta dot is equal to angular acceleration. Let's, let's just change that out with angular acceleration because that's what we're solving for. That negative is going to come up front. X dot is velocity, right? Change in position over change in time. We know it's going to be a negative 10. Or I guess it's going to be a, yeah. Um, how are we going to do that? Let's just make it a positive 10. Then this is going to be a 2. Length is at 0 0.3. Right, we've got to convert to meters. Then sine of theta is 60 degrees, so sine of 60 degrees. All right, so then let's plug in the number. You plug this in, you get that your angular acceleration is equal to negative 19.2 radians per second. All right, let's move on to the next question. So we're finding the angular acceleration this time. So if we find angular velocity this way, let's take another derivative to find the angular acceleration. So we're going to take another derivative of this. So we're going to find x delta dot. And so we're going to need to use product rule, right? Because we have sine of theta in this, we're going to need to use a chain rule and a product rule. So this is going to become negative 2 L cosine of theta. And then by chain rule, we have to attach another theta dot. So this is going to become theta dot. And it's going to attach to that one, so it's going to become squared. Then we're going to add it to the next one. So it'll be negative 2 L cosine of theta. And then now we're taking the derivative of theta dot, so it's going to become theta, theta double dot. And again, theta double dot is equal to our angular acceleration, so that's what we're solving for now. So let's rearrange this equation in terms of that. So what are we going to get? x dot dot minus, or let's add, right, let's get plus 2L cosine of theta angular velocity squared equal to negative 2 L cosine of theta, theta double dot. Then we're going to divide to get theta dot, and we're going to just recreate that with the 
acceleration to get x double dot. over my negative 2 uh, cosine of theta. All right, so we're left with this equation. Then what we're going to do is just plug in everything we know. So we know that x double dot, uh, we kind of made the motion backwards, so we're going to make sure that this is going to be a negative. All right, so negative 10, uh, negative 16, right? Yeah, negative 16 is what I meant to put there. Plus 2, length of 0 0.3 cosine of 60 degrees, then angular acceleration, so we're going to do, that's negative 19.2 squared, so the negative doesn't matter, then over negative 2 times length of 0 0.3 cosine of 60. Sweet, so many plug this in, get that angular acceleration, is negative 183 radians per second squared. And that's the problem. So pretty cool, right? Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. Check out the rest of my channel for more problems on chapter 16, all that angular acceleration, all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.